So this video continues the saga of the caber toss and particularly the caber its interaction with the ground. Just let me remind you where we were. So we have this caber that hits the ground. There's a large normal force and a large frictional force that interacts with the cable during that short period of time when it first hits the ground until we go from the tip the condition before where the tip is moving to the condition after where the tip is not moving. Our game plan here was that we wanted to, given the initial state variables, be able to, and given the fact that these impulses happen, apply conservation in order to first find out how, what the impulses are and then eventually to figure out what the final state variables are so that we can then proceed with um, actually simulating the system after this impact with the ground has happened. So we came up with an expression for what the tip was, tip's velocity was in terms of velocity of the center mass and rotation about the center mass. And then we applied ideas of conservation to figure out how the initial momentum compares to the final momentum. That final momentum is going to simply be the initial momentum plus the change in momentum due to the two impulses. And similarly, we came up with expression an expression for the initial and the final angular momentum. Of course, the initial angular momentum will simply have a part due to translation and a part due to rotation. The final angular momentum, because it's pivoting around the point on the ground, will only be rotational. And furthermore, since the impulses are being applied at that point, the final angular momentum actually will be the same as the initial angular momentum. So there'll be a change in the linear momentum due to the impulses, but since all of those impulses are applied at the pivot point that we're taking as the origin, the final angular momentum will be the same. Okay, so at this point, we wanna figure out what these impulses are. In order to figure out what these impulses are, we're gonna apply this condition that's required which is that the tip's velocity has to be zero at the, end of the, at the end of the time when it lands. So let's go through that and just see, at least show that it's possible to solve this problem. And we're not actually gonna solve it all the way because I've already spent too long talking about this. Um, but if I write the tip's velocity out, right, in terms of the sort of final velocity of the center mass, right, the, so the final tip velocity will be the final velocity of the center of mass plus minus L on to theta final times theta hat, right? And that has to do with both the idea that it's the center of mass is translating and the center of mass is rotating, okay? If we, when we also know that this has to be zero, right? Now we can apply our momentum conservation to kind of find, come up with an expression for what the linear velocity of the center of mass is, right? We know that the final momentum is the initial momentum plus that impulse. So this term is simply going to be whatever the initial momentum is plus the impulses. divided by the mass, right? So that is what the final velocity of the center of mass is in terms of those two impulses, right? Similarly, we can do the same thing here and apply the conservation of angular momentum to figure out an expression for the final angular velocity, right? You recall that we already did that, right? So if we solve for the angular velocity here, we can see that we can write that in terms of the position of the center of mass relative to the pivot point, the moment, linear momentum of the center of mass, and then the, angular, the initial angular momentum about the center of mass. So this will be minus L on two um, times and I'm going to play a little fast and loose with um, vectors here. All of this is in the k hat direction. I'm going to divide out the k hats um, So this, this is actually in the k-hat direction, so I really should just be saying this is what, whatever the magnitude of this is with the sign since it's in the k-hat direction. So this is an expression for what my final angular momentum is. You can see that my final angular momentum has to do both with how fast the thing is rotating, it's translating initially, and to do with how fast the thing is rotating initially. Okay. Now, at this point, I want to sort of step back and ask the question, can we actually solve this problem? So 
What do we know? We know this. It's just the initial x, x hat, i hat, and the initial j hat velocity. Right? So that's pretty easy to determine. We don't know this. We do know the initial center of mass momentum, right? That is, again, has to do with the velocity. So we know that. And we do know what the initial angular velocity is as well, okay? So the only things that we don't know, and we also know what r hat is, right? Because we know what the initial um, orientation of this is. So the only two quantities we don't know are what the normal and the frictional um, impulses are. Note that the normal impulse is in the i hat direction, and the frictional imp is in the j hat direction, and the frictional impulse is in the i hat direction. So in fact, what you've got here is a vector equation which has both an i hat and a j hat component, and it has two unknowns, one of which is the normal force, and one of which is the normal impulse, and one of which is the frictional impulse. So at this point, I'm going to um, write QED, which is to say that in principle, I could find what the normal impulse is and the frictional impulse by, is by just solving this, right? And once I find that, then it's easy for me to actually go ahead and figure out what the final center of mass um, velocity is and what the final um, rotational velocity is, which again, those two things will actually be redundant in this particular case. So at that point, it'd be easy to find at f dot, which is actually what you need in order to proceed. Okay, I'm not going to do the algebra here. It's bad enough trying to do algebra live. Doing it on film is even worse because when you make a mistake, you need to start all over again. And I've started over all over again too many times on this. So, but at this point, you can see that I actually could figure this out in order to proceed to the next step. Big idea here that I want you to take away is this idea that impulse, right? is something that it makes sense both for linear momentum, right? The change in linear momentum here is due to an impulse. And it also makes sense for angular momentum. You can calculate a torque impulse, right? In the same way you calculate a torque as r cross f, you can calculate a torque impulse as r cross a force, uh, r cross impulse. And that torque impulse can give you a change in angular momentum in the same way that a force impulse can give you a change in linear momentum.